All right, we're gonna put our beam in today. Uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut this section of sheetrock or the plaster because it's coming down anyway, we have to replace it. Uh, we're gonna find where our floor joists land on each side and then we're gonna build a temp wall and a temp wall, a temp wall on this side, a temp wall on this side. And before we do that, we're gonna throw our beam in between the temp walls so, because you won't be able to get that beam in there. Uh, we'll put it right against this wall. So then once we build our temp walls and then we have to build them downstairs in the basement to transfer the load downstairs. Once we do that, we'll demo the rest of this wall. We'll build our framing for the wall. We'll get rid of the electric or whatever we have to do to, to get rid of our, to get, to get it out of our way. We'll take our measurement, cut our beam, and then we're gonna put our beam in. We're gonna land our beam on this wall. And then we'll, we'll build a couple of king and jack studs or whatever on this wall to hold up the beam that transfers down, downstairs to that beam. All right, talk a little bit about what this beam is. It's LVL? Yeah, it's an engineered beam or whatever. It's meant for load bearing walls and openings like that. Back in the day, they just used two two by tens with a piece of plywood in between or whatever, but now they make these beams that are perfectly three and a half wide. This one's 11 and three quarters deep. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You just put it in there and it's like laminated plywood pieces that make up three and a half inches. And how did you know that this is a load bearing wall? Uh, you can go up in your attic, um, see where the floor joists run. So I look up in the attic, you see the floor joists sitting on this wall, and then also downstairs there's a beam that goes across the basement that picks up this whole wall all the way through. So this wall all the way through is a low bearing wall. We're not doing much to start this work day, just demoing the rest of the living room and kitchen wall. Unfortunately, I aimed the camera too low. In a minute here, you'll see Mike ripping down the ceiling and we'll expose the floor joist. All right, we're gonna start building our temp wall. Actually, once I've seen the, the floor joist above, since they can't or leave her over like two feet or like a foot and a half, I'm only gonna build one wall and I'll double up the studs under that one wall. So that'll pick up, you know, both floor joists is we don't want to have to build on this side and then we'll transfer our wall downstairs. Um, and I'm only going to come like six inches off this wall since we'll have plenty of room on this side to put the beam in once we do. I'm going to tape off the floor. I'm going to see if I can get a stud down without screwing it down, but I have a feeling that's not really going to work. At least we can screw to this floor that's not hardwood. I'll just extend it past and screw down this top, this bottom plate and then run it and see what happens. But it doesn't really need to be screwed that, you know, you just need it solid. You slam them two by fours in real tight and you'll be good. So we're gonna start laying that out and building that and then we'll transfer our marks downstairs. Tool belt time. Now we get to build the fake wall. You'll notice we actually double up the studs while building this fake wall just gives us extra support. All right, we got our first wall built. What I did was I took a, a drill bit and I drilled through the floor. So now I'm gonna take this me the measurement off this drill bit over to here and I'm gonna transfer it down so I know exactly where we are. So we'll do that downstairs. We'll find the drill bit through the subfloor downstairs and we'll transfer our mark over and then we'll build another wall just like this downstairs. Now we head into the basement, start building our fake wall down there. We're only gonna use single studs in this case. We already have the support upstairs. This is really just a precautionary wall. You can also see the main beam running through the entire basement of the house. Lou's been hanging out with us for the first few weeks of working on this house. He's taking advantage of all the scrap that's laying around. He takes that over to the local scrap yard, cashes in for a few bucks. Now we head back upstairs and we start building out the main king studs and jack studs for the beam to sit on.
finally we start cleaning up the uh, area there and then Lou and Mike carry that beam in and believe it or not it actually slides right in that's kind of a first for us and we disassemble the wall and that's about it all right we got in there uh, we put it in this pocket back here I got two uh, jack studs here the existing one and then this was short whatever they did I think there's a piece coming over I cut, cut it outside to throw, throw a little filler in and then we got the beam level we put two king studs over here these two are the kings these two are the king, uh, jacks this holds up the beam this is the kings go all the way up to the top yeah, and, and the two jacks hold, hold up, up the, the, beam. the beam it actually ended up working pretty good the beam was level and sat on all the floor joists. Sometimes your floor joists are all whacked or whatever. You gotta get the beam level. Um, you can shim. You have to shim underneath the beam, underneath the floor joists. But everything worked out. I don't know how, but that's the first time, right? Yeah, it's we've the first put time. in what three, four beams and more than that. And I always have to shim them. So whatever. So that went in pretty good. And that was that's good. good. Now it's a nice open yeah, we concept cut our, here. Cut our bottom plate out where we want it to be cut. And we should be all good to go. So this is what you'll see when you walk into the house. Nice and open.